Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. I'd like to call this an exponential system, but the first equation is not exponential. It's kind of like a non-standard type of equation because we have the polynomial and the exponentials mixed. But the second equation is an exponential one. And let me tell you something. We're not necessarily looking for integer solutions. If I told you X and Y are integers and I gave you the second equation, you would get the answer pretty quickly, right? Okay, obviously the second equation by itself has infinitely many solutions, but the first one gives us some boundaries. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and talk about some methods that wouldn't work, and then we'll talk about something that works, an interesting way to approach this problem. And at the end, I'm going to show you a graph, which is pretty interesting in my opinion. So go ahead and think about what kind of graphs we, would we be getting from these two equations, and then let's compare your findings with the result at the end. Okay, so let's start with the first equation, x plus 2 to the power x equals y plus 2 to the power y. Obviously, this equation also has infinitely many solutions, but when you take these two together, hopefully we'll have a finite number of solutions. Now, how do we proceed? Well, I can kind of think about the following. I have x plus 2 to the power x, right? And then I have y plus 2 to the power y. So, well, they're already isolated, but would it be possible? Here's my first question. Let's put le y on the left-hand side because it kind of looks a little better, to kind of like a y equals f of x type of thing, but this is obviously not y equals f of x type. But anyways, so is it possible to solve for y from here? Suppose you had a number on the right-hand side. Let's say, how about 11? Okay, 11 is one of the, I think, um, uh, problems that I used, x plus 2 to the power of x equals 11. Anyways, again, if I share, if I find the link, uh, I'll share it with you. So in this case, you would have a simpler equation, right? y plus 2 to the y equals 11. Great. And then from here, you can make a lot of different assumptions, guesses, whatever. Or you can also think about it this way. 2 to the y equals 11 minus y. This is an increasing function, right? As y increases, uh, the 2 to the y increases. So you basically looking at an exponential equation or function with a base greater than 1. And this is a decreasing function because think about it. As y increases, 11 minus y, you're subtracting a larger number. That's going to give you a smaller result. So ex ex increasing, decreasing. They'll intersect at a single point, And you could pretty much guess, find some bounds, so on and so forth. But in this case, y equals 3 would work. Okay, great. So now, y equals 3, great, but what about the x value, right? Which x do you think is going to give you this, uh, this value? When you think about it, it's pretty much hmm, the same thing. What is going on here, right? Because if x equals 3, then this will work. So does that mean x is like 3, 3? Is that the only solution? Can x be 5? What happens if x is 5? So on and so forth. So, so many different questions you can talk about. But how do we put that into the second one, right? If x is equal to 3, wow, that seems to be working. Well, where does that come from? So let's talk about the details here. So I have this equation, x plus 2 to the x equals y plus 2 to the y. So that's kind of interesting because I have the same thing with different variables. So let's define the following function, f of t equals t plus 2 to the t. t is good, right? Okay, now... What can I do with this? Well, this basically tells me if this is my function, x plus 2 to the x is f of t evaluated at t equals x. So if t equals x, then I get f of x equals x plus 2 to the x. And if t is equal to y, then we get f of y equals... I know this is kind of unusual for people who are used to seeing y equals f of x all the time, but that's basically... Uh, a general way to introduce functions, but um, we can use any variable. Okay, so now what am I going to do with this? So I got two equations, f of x and f of y, and what do I know? I know that they're equal. Great. So this gives me f of x equals f of y. What does that mean? It means that I have a function whose outputs are the same at two different points. Wait a minute. Can they be two different points? Well, if you have a function, let's say like this, and you evaluate the output at two different inputs, they will be different. But if your function looks like this, what if your function looks like this? 
right? Then obviously you're gonna have more than one X value or one T value for which the uh, output outputs are the same, right? So what does that mean? What's the difference between these two graphs? And is where it, what it comes down to. When you have a function that is always increasing or that is always decreasing, that means that function is one to one. Of course, we're talking about a continuous function, right? Hopefully. So one to one basically means that you're going to find a different, if you take two, okay, I should probably do, uh, define it in a better way. So with one-to-one -one functions, basically what happens is you cannot have two different, two different inputs giving you the same output. Or if the two outputs are the same, then inputs have to be the same too. So f of x equals f of y basically implies x equals y with one-to-one -one functions. I think they're also called injective. Great, so this implies that x equals y. Great. So from this, x plus 2 to the x equals y plus 2 to the y, we ended up with x equals y. This is great. And we actually kind of found it, but only for particular values of x. And I don't know why I picked 11, by the way, but that just gave away the solution. But anyways, that's okay. I guess uh, I picked an easier one. So x equals y, and now you have the second equation, 3 to the x plus 3 to the y equals 54. If you replace x with y, you get 3 to the power y plus 3 to the power y equals 54. This implies 2 times 3 to the power y equals 54, which means 3 to the power y equals 27, and y is equal to 3. So once you know a linear relationship between x and y, the rest is fairly easy. Okay? Great. So if y is equal to 3, obviously, x is also going to be 3 because x equals y. That was our finding, which was super duper important because that basically gave us the solution. Make sense? So our function is as defined as f of t equals t plus 2 to the t is 1 to 1. It's always increasing. And you can tell that it's always increasing by looking at the derivative. The derivative of t is 1 with respect to t. And this is 2 to the t times ln 2. And as you can see, this is positive. This is positive all the time. And the first derivative is positive, which means f of t is always, always increasing. Make sense? Which it means it's one-to-one -one or injective. Great. So that basically gave us the solution. What would happen if uh, we didn't have this type of expression? Then, of course, that would, be, uh, that would be another story. And you can't really solve an equation like this because that's pretty non-standard. Especially with two variables like this, that's going to be impossible. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions. And if you said the graph of this is equivalent to y equals x, you're totally right about that. It's just a straight line. And the second one is actually more interesting because as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches a certain value because this is going to approach zero. That's why it kind of bends. So this is kind of similar to x plus y equals something, but it's kind of bent in a very exponential way. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.